One half of the main event at CFFC 126 on October 13th, the gunman himself, Cedric Gunnison. Cedric, my man, how you doing? Like two weeks out from the fight. I'm doing great, man. Really good. And, you know, elephant in the room, in my opinion, is you're coming off of your first loss in two years. So I would like to start with that because you were the favorite going into the fight. We talked before the fight, and it didn't go down how you were expecting. So what, in your opinion, went wrong on your part? Uh, honestly, just just Watley's game plan. He had a good game plan, and he was really strong with his double leg. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, man, honestly, I, I want to say I feel like I won that fight. I didn't go to the hospital after. I know he did. Uh, he had to get eight staples. He had to get five stitches in his face, three stitches above his eye, uh, and I went home happy. So... I don't know. I understand, though, from the judge's point of view, why they could choose the other way, because he was able to get the takedown every round. But it's also in my point of view, it's like, what did he do with the takedown? He didn't pass the guard. He didn't go for submissions. He wasn't throwing ground and pound. I was going for submissions. I was working off my back. I was able to cut him off my back. Um, But I don't want to be one of those guys either. That's like, oh, I won that fight. The judges picked him. I feel like the judges picked him and I should have done more to uh, to keep it from going to the judges. So I just said it is what it is. Well, it's interesting, too, because one of the judges had a 38-38, so it it was a close fight in the respect. It it could have gone either way, and it certainly makes sense that you feel you won the fight. Um, How do you feel about CFFC, a lot of regional promotions, not having that mandatory fifth round, right? It's like, if it's not a tie, like, did you want that fifth? I wanted that fifth so bad, man. I felt so fresh and good. Um, I'm not taking anything away from Watley, though. He had sure. a smart game plan. He was able to get that takedown. Um, but even he told me himself after the fight, we got to talk for a while, and he said he didn't feel like he won that fight. Um, but, again, not taking anything away from him. You cannot give up the takedown like that, and I gave up the takedown. So no excuses. I've been uh, switching things up for this fight. Let's just say I have a little bit more strength. Uh, I've been working really, really hard on my game, my uh, ground game. So we'll see how it shows in this fight October 13th. And I've seen your captions on Instagram. It's very obvious you're very motivated heading into this. But like, what has that loss? Because like I said, first loss in over two years and only second of your entire career. So like, what has that done for your motivation? How hungry has that made you? Man, I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of it. I'm <laughs> That's I'm once. <laughs> it takes to, get to that to that big stage. And I feel like that was the opportunity right there. So um, but I don't want to be negative. I feel like Tyrone Woodley. He was a good champion for a while, but I feel like a lot of his interviews and a lot of stuff he did was kind of negative and it didn't really bring any positives to his career. So all I'm doing is I'm focusing on how do I get better? What do I look at from that fight that were the mistakes I was making? And let's not make those mistakes again. And this time uh, I'm looking to put on a different performance. Do you think you're one win away from that rematch or at least that title shot again? He said he will never rematch me again. He said it was way too hard of a fight for way too little money. So really? Was, yeah, we spoke. We spoke for a good probably 30 minutes. We He was back at the hotel, and uh, we kind of hung out, and we talked for a while. He's a cool dude. Wally's an awesome guy. not taking anything away from him. Um, I would love that rematch. I'm, I mean, but it is what it is. If, if he doesn't feel like he's going to do that, I'm going to focus on what I'm doing, and I'm going to keep getting better. And if the big stage doesn't want to bring me up, I'm going to keep knocking these guys out until, until one day they're like, all right, we've seen enough. Let's, let's bring them in. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't think the loss sets you back from an outside perspective. I don't think it sets you back very far in terms of uh, your career trajectory. And this fight card is also in Florida. How do you like it last time fighting for cage three in Florida? Obviously, you didn't get the win, but like, how do you like the atmosphere? How do you like uh, it's not at the hard rock this time, but still you get the same kind of vibe. I loved it. I love Florida, man. Uh, I'm actually probably gonna be moving out there after this event. So, oh, really uh, looking forward to be uh, becoming, you know, part of the part of the team, part of the, the uh, atmosphere and just, just everything. I, I went and checked out a few gyms out there a little while back and I liked the way that the guys were working. So it seems like it's going to be a cool place. Tampa had a great crowd. Um, a lot of them were cheering and a lot of them were cheering for me. So I want to make them proud. I want to go back out there and this time not leave it up to the judges and uh, put on a show for everybody out there in Florida. What gyms did you check out? Where would you maybe train? Uh, inside control. That's really close right there in St. Petersburg um gracie tampa south i had trained there before when i lived there for a short amount of time and then uh also that inside control is a is like a sisterhood of like eight other schools Word. so I, I, maybe that's where i'm going to be because it's so close to the house and i'll be able to train to all those other schools as well so 
I mean, Florida is a hotbed of MMA talent and gyms. So I- exciting news there, man. And this fight, not the famous one, but you're taking on Julio Cesar, uh, Cesar Chavez. And it, last time I actually talked to Brandon Lopez, like the day that he it was announced he was going to be fighting him and he got the contract. He's like, whoa, fighting Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez, what what is that? I didn't. And so <laughs> he was all confused by that. So uh, did you watch that fight of his last time out? I have, yeah. I've seen some of his stuff. Uh, my favorite thing about him is he's a dog, man. Like he is. I, he's not afraid to fight, and I like that. I've been getting ducked and dodged by a lot of these guys that are moving up, and I understand that's part of the sport, which I do not like that aspect of the sport is like trying to pick your fights and trying to pick your way to the top. Uh, I feel like we're both dogs, and it's going to be a dog fight. We're going to go at it. He likes to try to go to decision because he's a tough dude. He's never been knocked out, but we'll see how he does with me. That's all I can say. Well, and that was an important thing coming into last fight. You were putting an emphasis on wanting that finish, and unfortunately, you didn't find it. So is that another – you want that finish real bad again here? I love finishes, man. Most of my fights, if you look at my career, most of them by finish. Um, I'm not necessarily going to hunt it, though. He's a tough guy. So we're going to go at it. And I I assume he's going to have a similar game plan. These guys are probably seeing what Wally did and was able to do, and I'm sure he's going to come out there looking to take me down. So um, we'll just we'll see what we have in store for him. I mean, you said you've been working the, the strength and the wrestling. So I'm excited to see what you have in store, too. And just based off of that, I know you're not a, a big prediction guy, but I do want to ask, you know, based on what you've seen from him, what you think you're going to bring from the table or to the table. How do you kind of see this fight playing out? I see us going toe to toe. I really do. If he's as tough as his record shows, which he's been able to make it to the decision, he's not going to give up. This guy's going to be looking to fight all the way through. And so am I. So at the end of the day, it's it's who wants it more, who's going to dig deep, who's going to be more of a dog. Like I said, it's going to be a dog fight. Who's going to dig who's going to dig deep more? And I feel like I'm going to show that. I mean, we'll see. He better have a smart game plan if he thinks he's going to do anything in my cage. And uh, this camp you spent at the Lab MMA again, correct? I've been all over the place, man. I've been up at oh, uh, yeah? Lloyd, been up at Lloyd's in Maryland. Uh, they've had a few UFC fighters. They're they're so good up there. That's where Sadiq's at, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Been up there working with those guys. I've been out in Dale City again with Elisha Harsberger up in Richmond at uh, MMAI, and basically all I've been doing for this camp is driving all over the place and getting as as many looks and different views from different people as I can. And, you know, just, I mean, kind of name drop some of the people that you've been training with that you don't normally train with. Like, you know, I just mentioned Sadiq Yusuf. Uh, anyone else, like, of interest that people would know? I'm still learning a lot of their names up there. Uh, it's a lot of the black belts and brown belts up there. And uh, I don't I don't necessarily know all their names yet. We just get up there and we grind. Master Lloyd, he doesn't, uh, he's not much for talking. When you get up there, it's it's time to work. So, I've been keeping my head down and embracing, basically getting comfortable, getting uncomfortable, and just putting in the work. So I, something that many people watching this interview, many MMA fans just don't know that I found out recently because I started training in this country. Every gym has, what would you say, three to four brown black belts that nobody's ever heard of that are just absolute killers. Like yeah. I had no idea until I got into a gym and I'm meeting people that live next door to me that have, like, you know, you just have no idea. So Gyms all over the place. The amount of talent you're working with, even if it's not, you know, John Jones, Kamaru Usman, whatever it is, it, it's crazy. And the different looks, I'm sure, have been a big help this camp. Am I right? Yeah. And these guys are getting ready for ADCC, too. Yeah. So, they're, it's so, just dogs, man. Yeah. Let's say that ground game is uh, it's ready. So I'm just I'm looking forward to showing that, man. I've been working so hard on my wrestling for a long time. And I really am upset that I didn't get to show that in the last fight. And you have to give it to Wally. He was strong. He had a lot of strength. <laughs> Uh, I should have been lifting a lot more in that last camp, but that's a mistake I didn't make this time. So we'll see how it translates. And uh, who's going to be in your corner out of all the gyms you've been training with? I got my my uh, dream team, I like to call them. It's uh, Romano Childs, Mel Lewis, and Scott Oppenheim. And uh, we've been working together for a long time. They know me so well. We've worked with each other so for such a long amount of time that they know how I am in the corner. They know how I am before the fight. They know how to, they know how to bring the best out of me. And um, I know they're going to be able to do that again. So I just want to make them proud. I want to make everybody back at the lab proud. Also, all these other schools I've been training with, I want to show them that it wasn't for nothing and that all the help they've been giving me, it, it means it means a lot. So, And uh, how, I know CFSC kind of varies by fighter, but how is your contract structured if you're allowed to say, like, is this your last fight? Do you do like one fight deals? What's that looking like? 
we were, I was signed before this last one. So that last one would have been my last fight on the contract. And we were looking to hopefully either get to contender or move up. Um, and now it's kind of, now we're kind of going fight by fight. I don't want to be, it's not that I don't want to be held because I'm not really going to go anywhere else because CFFC, I'd say, they're one of the best promotions. They're good, uh, man. Yeah, I really like CFFC. So I'm going to be with them for a while. But at the same time, uh, I'm going to do what it takes to, to move up to that bigger stage, man. I'm hungry and I'm, I'm hungry for some money too. And um, I'm going to do what it takes to get there. Well, and it's, you know, obviously it's never good timing for a loss, but this sort of like revamp, if you want to call it the comeback, whatever you're saying, it's good timing because you have 2023 still, a couple in 2024, and then you're right in line for what? Tough contender series. So is that kind of the plan? Pick up a couple wins and then next spring, summer, get back in UFC's eyes? Exactly, man. Like they say, it's the highest highs and the lowest lows. Uh, right now, I'm going through one of those lows, and I'm looking forward to getting back to one of those highs. I've been putting in the work. I've been grinding. That fight didn't slow me down one little bit. It, it did teach me a little bit. It taught me in different areas that it's not all about speed. It's not all just about the striking and being able to set up your opponent. It's going to sometimes be about like finding those transitions when you have a stronger guy or you have a guy like Wally who's kind of being patient in those positions. So um, I learned a lot from the last fight, and I'm going to use everything I learned in this next fight. So a random question here for me. I, I think it was maybe your interview with Zach Kaufman on Four Ounces of Freedom. Someone, you had a gun hanging on the back wall. Where's that at, man? Why don't I get that? Hell yeah, I still got it. I, you got to switch it up, man. You can't, you can't have everything <laughs> showing all the time, but you already know I'm the gun, man. I got, I got plenty of those laying around, so. Yeah, are you like, do you actually like shoot a lot? You're a big gun guy? Um, I'd like to shoot more. With all the training that I'm doing, I don't get to do enough. Sure. But uh, my head professor, he actually teaches a lot of a lot of uh, military type uh, guys, and I'm not gonna put all his stuff out there. But he does a lot of stuff like that, and he's he's been uh, teaching me just a little bit here and there whenever we can. So, no, that's cool stuff. I, I like I like guns myself, so I was just curious. And then my uh, my my last sort of combat question is: obviously, UFC is the end goal. You kind of just laid out for me the the roadmap to get there. But I think I maybe asked you this before, but I can't remember, so I'm gonna ask you again. Um, last interview that is, but anyways. PFL, they're really making like a, a name for themselves in terms of how they treat their fighters, right? Good pay, full coverage, a lot of opportunities. It seems like I do media for them sometimes and, you know, they treat us well and I see how well they treat the fighters. So UFC is obviously the upper echelon of all promotions, but PFL, is that is that a promotion that could potentially interest you? I really like PFL. I yeah. really like it, man. I've been watching a lot of stuff they've been doing. Uh, it's It's a little different, like you said, from the UFC. But I enjoy that. I like how they kind of bring the crowd into it a little bit. They let people kind of almost pick who they want to see fight. And, um, I mean, I think that's very interesting. That's It should be a little bit different than just what the the high, higher ups, quote unquote, choose. You know what I mean? This is, yeah. this, at the end of the day, it's a show. It's for the fans. It's for the people. So they should have a little say in, in who they want to see fight. Well, the PFL model is cool, too, because they do, like, the, the season format. So... Like, I love UFC, my favorite, but it is annoying how it's like, why is this guy fighting for a title sometimes? You know what I mean? As to where PFL, you don't really get that because it's a tournament. It's a bracket and you you, you can't really get that. It's hard to fix a tournament like, you know, to cater towards what the up the up tops want, like you said. So do you like the season format, too? Because I know you kind of like to fight fairly frequently. I do. And that that cash prize, too, I feel like is another big motivator for the fighters like. We're hungry, man. All we do is train and you don't get paid like you get paid to fight. Yeah. But when you're putting in all these hours on the match, you're not getting paid for that. Right. So that cash prize is it's a motivator and it gives those guys something to look forward to and an opportunity at being able to take care of their family and coaches and whoever else, whoever needs help. Like it gives them an opportunity to do so. So I, I really do like that. Well, hey, man, it's a good time to get back on a win streak in 2023, 2024 with all the opportunities in MMA now. It's it's, it's awesome. And Cedric, before I get you out of here, man, I just want to give you the opportunity uh, with all the fans you have, everybody watching this on Fight Pass and everybody watching this interview on Cage Side Press. Anything you'd like to say to everybody? If so, the mic is yours. October 13th. Just check me out, especially coming off a of loss. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry right now. And uh, we're going to see how it shows especially some of the things that I've changed in uh, our game plan and in my routine. We're going to see how it, how it uh, affects my, my performance. So October 13th, tune in CFFC UFC fight pass. Uh, if you're in Florida, come check it out live. It's not going to be something you want to miss. 
Well, hey, I can't say it better than that. So, ladies and gentlemen, the gunman, Cedric Gunnison. Best of luck, brother. Kick ass. And uh, we'll get that post-fight interview in, too, okay? Oh, yeah. Thanks, bro.